Welcome to Screen Riot. This week's movie is Love with the Proper Stranger, a drama from 1963. This episode will contain major spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, it's available to stream on all of your major services for $2.99. So go check it out and come back to the podcast because this is Screen Riot. Welcome, movie fans, back to Screen Red. I'm Justin, and I'm joined with co-hosts Eddie, Kyle, and John. And this week, we're taking a look at a drama film from 1963 called Love with the Proper Strangers. <laughs> the, so Natalie Wood stars as Angela, a New York City sales clerk, who has recently become aware that she is pregnant after having a one-night stand with Rocky, a jazz musician played by Steve McQueen. Rocky agrees to help Angie find an underground abortion clinic, uh, doctor, I should say, but after seeing the unsanitary facility, he refuses to let her go through with the procedure and attempts to make her an honest woman. Well, yeah, <laughs> I guess <laughs> that's that's basically the yeah. the whole premise of the movie. Um, so this movie was directed by Robert Mulligan, who comes from the To Kill a Mockingbird fame. Mm-hmm. He directed that in 1962, so that was like one year prior to this movie here. Yep. Um, and it was shot by cinematographer uh, the Milton R. Krasner, who is kind of famous from uh, the Seven Year Itch and All About Eve. Okay. Um, nice. Seven Year Itch was 1955, and All About Eve was 1950. So, almost a decade before. It's it's kind of interesting because the director, the producer, and the composer for this movie all came from To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh really? Because so it, it wasn't just the director. It was yeah, more. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of people that came over from that movie. Um, now the composer also did uh, the Magnificent Seven, oh, okay. uh, which is a great score in my mind. But um, yeah, he's he's written a lot of great scores. Gotcha. Um, well, I was also looking up. I was curious the Oscar nominations. Yeah. So, so it has uh, five nominations in 1964, uh, 64 Oscars. Right. Um, but none of them are wins. Right. Right. So I was curious what they're up for. So they're up for Best Actress for Natalie Wood, which mm-hmm. I totally agree. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but she was up against um, Patricia Neal, who won that year. Okay. I don't even know who that is. What, what was she in? It was in a movie called HUD. HUD. I've um, heard of HUD. I think it's a Western, I think. I don't know. I'm not sure. I've never heard of that movie. Almost yeah. positive. Yeah. And she was up against um, Leslie Cannon. Again, someone I'm not familiar with. Yeah. Shirley MacLaine. Okay. And Rachel Roberts. So mm. only out of those people, like Shirley MacLaine is obviously the biggest name yeah. that I know of. Right. right. And obviously Natalie Wood, too, because she's right. she was big. Wood. Yeah. yeah. Um, HUD is a um, Paul Newman right. film. Oh. Um, honest and hardworking Texas rancher Homer Banyan. That, that's odd. <laughs> um, has a conflict with his unscrupulous, selfish, arrogant, and e- egotistical son, Hud, who sank into alcoholism after accidentally killing his brother in a car crash. Okay, oh, so wow. it's a fun movie. Got it. Yeah, yeah very fun. Yeah. Paul it's, Newman, it's, a, it's a comedy. And Paul Newman plays <laughs> Hud. He's like a... Yeah. I've, it, that was before... I believe that was f- before Cool Hand Luke. So he, he, he looks even more childish than, than not, yeah. so... Paul, gotcha. Paul Newman was one of my favorite actors, so it, yeah. it's probably a movie I need to go watch. Um, but it was also up for best writing. Mm-hmm. But the one, the movie that won that year was How the West Was Won. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And then it was up for best cinematography, uh, but HUD won that. Hmm. And it was up for best art slash set direction, which a movie called America America won, which yeah, I'd never heard of. Didn't sound familiar. Um, and it was up for best costume design, which uh, the movie that won was a. Uh, Federico Fellini's Eight and a Half, which, which is going to yeah. be hard to beat. Yes, because isn't Eight and a Half the one, or is that Roma? I think Roma is the one that has uh, the ecclesiastical uh, f- uh, fashion show in it. Mm. I think now, that's that what one. I found interesting though about the sixty four Academy Awards was they had they had separated those categories for like best costuming for a black and white movie. I was going to mention and bla- that. best uh, costuming for a uh, a colored movie. Mm. So it's like. They they had I don't know when they actually just went to just full color movies only or mm-hmm. you know did they just inter, did they just mix them together in yeah. you know in one one ceremony or what one category yeah it's interesting because they did that for cinematographer yeah they did it for 
um, art, art and set direction, costume, and yeah. there's like three other categories, but yeah. not for best picture. Right. Which yeah, was, they, yeah, they to kind me, of, seems kind of odd to yeah. have that real distinction between those five categories and then not have one for best picture. Like well, that. there's a there's a, a major distinction on how you light black and white mm-hmm. for, yeah. for for film, how you how you costume for black and white versus color. So the but but direction and and story and just overall feel of the film, I don't think there's that much of a a, a drastic change between the two mediums. It's kind of like editing yeah. in a way. It's like it's it doesn't matter if it's black and white or color. It's it's the editing is the same. Right. Mm-hmm. Same process. But Steve McQueen was not nominated for best actor. I can kind of see I agree. why. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. See, I thought he was one of the strongest in this movie. I I, I thought some of the scenes with Natalie with, um, with Natalie Wood, I thought she kind of was uh, over the top dramatic. Well, that was yeah. So that's the only so I, I to be clear, I like the movie. There's only a couple parts that I did not like, and almost all of them involved Natalie Wood, mm-hmm. which really is ridiculous because I liked her a lot throughout the entire movie. Right. But but it seemed like she was like hot, like super highs, and then a few really lows. Like uh, the the actual abortion scene you're bringing up. Yeah. When he goes in and he busts in, I was like, oh, you know, Steve McQueen's actually doing a good job right now. Like I can really feel like I feel like he actually wants to save her from this. Yeah. And then she's like, no, 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 and then he just and does this like sl- weird, and then he slaps her. Like, get out of it, you know? It's yeah. Like, stop like, being hysterical. <laughs> that was the, that part in particular, I was like, ugh. Like, okay, this feels, this does not feel good. This I, one scene. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. I mean, I think it's made to make you not feel good about it. I meant and, as a, I mean, like, just as a movie. I didn't oh, like it. I, well, it felt very old to me at that point. I thought she was, I thought she was okay in that scene. Um, but I don't necessarily think that she was too over the top because, I mean, Whenever she looked at those tools on the ground, yeah, that's when just like all shit hit the fan, and like I was about to do this, yeah, and she just came came to reality of what the process was like. Well, no, so she froze, yeah, so she didn't do anything. She just froze. She I can handle. Shock. I can yeah. handle that. Yeah, that was fine. It's whenever he came in and grabs her and does this whole like, and well, she no, does she, this she very dramatic. She again, was just looking at the window before, like the whole time. Yeah, when and he then, grabs her, he she starts making this noise. That's yeah, odd. Yeah, the only way but I can then she looks it. over at the at the ta- at the floor where all the tools are, and then that's when she goes over the top. That's I don't when, remember that's her when, looking at the tool. I think she yeah. looked at the tools. Well, the, before. the camera actually like she she had looked over briefly, and then the camera cut to the the two people over okay. there with the tools and everything. Yeah, and then that's when she just went berserk. Well, that scene, and then the crying on the door part. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The door threw me. I was like, "Ugh." Okay. Yeah. I it, my problem is this: the movie dealt with a whole lot of things really well. Old movies to me over they they over dramatize emotions like that to mm-hmm. a point where it's just not it, it's just not really. The Gone with the Wind did the same thing. Scarlett Scarlett O'Hara the entire when oh god like, oh, like it's just so <laughs> over the top. It's like. They they can't let go of the stage, right? Right, and that's exactly what I was about to that's say. My a lot issue. of them were former stage actors, actors yes. and you have to over emote so you and, can see it in the back of the uh, right. uh, exactly. I get it. It's yeah. just that was my only two complaints. Other than that, I think the movie was fine. I liked almost all of it. I, I mean, mean, Steve McQueen in particular, I thought did a decent job for what he did. To be honest, see the see, I'm I'm, I'm the I'm the reverse. Are you? Uh, yeah the the only part of Steve McQueen's acting I liked is during the is during that scene the mm-hmm. uh, the abortion scene. Um, I thought he was just ho hum. The, the the rest of the film, he didn't wow me. Um, well, I think I Paul don't... Newman would have better, done a better job. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> well, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the way this film is edited, there's long pauses mm-hmm. in between the dialogue where the actors are supposed to convey emotion with their look. Yes, <laughs> he did not have that. It was a straight. Uh, I I I didn't. I don't. I can't tell you other than the abortion scene. And his bl- and the, then the the scenes where he has a, a black, black eye, eye. Yeah. that his face actually changed. Well, he had this really goofy yeah. smile. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, every time he smiled, I'm like, "Why are you doing that?" Let me ask you a question. That looks though. so cheesy. But do you guys? Okay, I agree with you, John. And I think Natalie Wood definitely pulled off the 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 emotions with her face. To to me, that's where she showed. That's why. Yeah. That's my thing is she was being so like subtle the whole movie. They nailed subtlety in a way that, I think so. like other 
old movies that you've put up, yeah. Kyle, that you've put up, John, did not do. Yeah, like she right. was, I was like, holy shit, she may be my favorite old actress. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Um, that's why I didn't like the abortion scene and the crying scene is because it wasn't subtle. It was so right. like, this is out of character in a way that doesn't make any sense. Um, with him, I agree with you, but how many Steve McQueen have, movies have you seen where he does do that? I just don't think he can do that as an actor. Well, well, right, and 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 okay. I would say the exact same thing okay. about those movies too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Be, yeah. I mean, I thought it, you were saying specifically this movie with no, him. No, I'm no, like, no, no. I'm like, I've never seen Steve McQueen. However, though, like that. in yeah. Steve McQueen movies, they're typically action esque. Right. Like. Movies. Which was funny, by the way. The one action scene when they were running away from her brothers and stuff. I was like, "Oh, cue the music!" Yep. Yep. Like, yeah. <laughs> Steve McQueen on moped going chow. Yeah, chow. chow. Exactly. Now that's, I was waiting that's, for that. Yeah, that's typical Steve McQueen. But like, I don't know if Steve McQueen is built for those moments of silence. You're right. Yeah. And it's like he he doesn't really have a face that can. Uh, either that or he can't convey emotion very well just through face acting. Well, and I'll say this. I'm not defending Steve McQueen by any means. I will say that I didn't feel like he brought the movie. I don't think he brought the movie down a whole lot. The no, guy I, don't, that, I don't think so either. The guy that he's playing yeah. is playing aloof. He's yeah. playing He's playing emotionally stunted uh, musician who doesn't really... He loves his family, but at the same time feels anchored by them. He sees... Married men as being weighted down to their wives, which, by the way, made no sense to me because his dad seemed more than happy with his mom. Right. Yeah. Like that that made that one connection. I was like, nope, not feeling it. If we went to see the mom and the dad and the dad was just like, oh, you're always with the talking and oh, God, uh, and always cutting the bread the wrong way or something. I could be I could see the annoyance. They seem perfectly in or love. Or if the parents were divorced. Yeah, or, exactly. Or something. But they were perfectly in love. I was like, this yeah. doesn't make any sense. But uh, but I mean, I felt like he pulled off the role that he was supposed to be playing. I mean, again, I think so too. Paul Newman could have done it better maybe, but see, you know. I, and, and, and again, I'm going to, I have to disagree yeah. because his, his, he has a, a significant character arc. True. That is not shown in his, in his acting. When he, when he, when he goes, I'm going to marry you. Yeah. I want to marry you. His, his body movements, his body yeah. language, his face his is, it did not show me. Yeah, physically, that he was actually changing. Just his dialogue was changing. Yes, and now he's the same guy. He what? He's the same. He's acting the exact same way he was at the beginning of the film that he is. Whenever he's he's this new man and he, he wants to get married, and he wants a family, and so there's and only all that. so there is as you're bringing up this whole this whole like you know they don't they don't use the character arc they don't show the character arc well enough because he's not changing enough. Mm-hmm. That does bring up my only other big big flaw with this movie. He takes his coat off. He, he does do that. <laughs> but it, but it brings up that, my... that coat pissed me off. I did not like that coat. If it, well, well, it's always cold in New well, York, man. Well, no, so. I mean it's just. I mean it, it. It would be okay if it was open sometimes, but he was is always in this this closed, completely yeah. buttoned up coat that looks like a looks like a smock, like he's gonna like he's a pharmacist or something walking maybe, down the road. <laughs> maybe so, it was psychological that he's closed off to oh. other people. So I'm gonna say this. <laughs> Or Maybe. am I reaching? Well, yeah. no, that's what I was saying. He finally takes the coat off whenever he's there. Whenever he's he's invited over for dinner, yeah, yeah. to yeah. Natalie Wood's apartment. So, so let me ask you. Let me let me let me say this. I only have one other, and it, and this one is a big complaint. This one's a huge complaint. Um, again, I don't think it it did not ruin the movie for me, but this is a pretty goddamn big complaint. Um, how long? What? What? Tell me how this. Tell me the timeline for this movie. Okay, so when the, did they meet? They what at the music hall? No, or you no, mean no, their one night stand. Their one night stand. When was it? We don't know. We don't know. Well, right? it, it he he says something about uh, the some sort of dance or something like that, and he was like, I I kind of remember. It's like you're you're one of the girls, right? That, yeah. That you know came along or whatever. So it was long enough ago that he apparently doesn't remember her face. Well, okay, so and you she's gotta, pregnant. You got to think too. He's. He's a not necessarily a womanizer, but he's he's like this guy who's just like, eh, you know, totally. I'm just, I'm just gonna go out, have fun, totally, yeah, probably get smashed, play mm-hmm. my gig, and then move on. Absolutely agree with you. And it like just totally cuts it off. Not not disagreeing whatsoever. Okay, so let's assume it was a month because she knows that she knows that she's pregnant. So yeah, that's so what has to be. See, it has to be at least four weeks ago, mm-hmm. right? Somewhere between four and sixteen weeks ago, maybe eight weeks ago. Let's say eight weeks, just eight, to be eight fair. Weeks is good. So between four and eight weeks, when does she move out of her brother and mom's house? 
Oh, you're talking about like seeing the baby hump? There's no baby. She's got the tiniest waist. Mm -hmm. That's true. From beginning to end. She's like a size zero. She's a size zero minimum. A a negative two, this woman is. (laughs) And my problem is that I, okay, so she, they meet. She's not, she's pregnant. They meet at the music hall. Yeah. From there to when she moves out of her brother and mom's house. How long is that? Is that a day? Is it a month? Is it a week? Is it four I th- days? I thought it was like a day, but there. But you're right. There is no official timeline. It, it's it's got to be over more than one day because he's going back and forth, and she says, "I'll see you on Sunday." However, I do have to say though, they did never they, they never went through seasons. It was always cold, so it was always. Pro- I would say this movie probably was within a two month gap. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. But within two months, she should start. She should start to show, especially if she's at eight to eight to sixteen weeks. You start showing. Well, I did. I know that um, the the cook, you yeah, there that the brothers were trying to pair up Natalie Wood with. Yeah, Columbo. Yeah, Columbo. I a I felt bad for that guy, but um, no shit. Yeah, no <laughs> but, shit. But yes. b he made a little sly comment that was really funny in a way that he says, uh, "Well, you know, New Year's Eve is you know nine months away." And I'm like, oh, shit, that is hilarious because yeah. he doesn't know that she's pregnant at that point. Yes. Right. And and he was like, what are you doing for New Year's Eve? Just like just trying to create another date, you know, later on. Yeah. You know, just to give her space or whatnot. But I just thought it was funny that, oh, shit, New Year's Eve, you know, she's going to be having a baby. By, by yeah. then. <laughs> now, Colum- Columbo was a super nice guy who she shit on in so many ways. But um but yeah, that time yeah was my I, only real big problem. I can I can kind of see that. It's just the the thing on um, the seasons because typically, like in movies, you can actually tell a, a timeline yeah. if you if you are going through seasons and if they're yeah. actually progressing through that. But the, it's always been in winter. Yes the the problem the only problem I have and I agree with you the yeah. only problem I have is that she moves she so she meets this guy gets him away from him she he stalks her. Um, they end up together for a second. She ends up telling her brothers and then moving out of her parents' house, moving out of her parents' house, finds another apartment, furnishes the other apartment. Mm -hmm. Like there's a whole bunch of things that take place. Then she goes back to work at Macy's. They haven't seen each other in at least a few weeks because they're acting completely like, well, how have you been? You know, blah, blah, blah. Then she says, I'll see you on Sunday. So another week goes by. Yeah. Right. There's all this time that's built into this thing. And yet there's no advancement. In like you're saying, the season. There's no advancement in her her body shape. There's no. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of things that just don't seem to progress. It's a small complaint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's I, a complaint. I, I totally. I you know, I didn't really even think about her showing like towards the end of the movie. I didn't. I, I never really. Well, I thought they were going to do a trick when she came out. She came out of Macy's at one point. She's buttoning her jacket up, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, so they're going to like make her wear a jacket the rest of the movie. So we just oh, assume right. she looks bulky. Mm-hmm. So she's and like, nope. Then she pulls that bitch off later on in the movie, and she's back to a little thin <laughs> waist. I'm like, when the hell is she? Is she pregnant? Or is yeah. that a lie? Oh, I almost lie? thought it was a lie. <laughs> that would be funny because I noticed she's trapping it t- him. Yeah. I noticed it too that she never her body image never changed yeah and about halfway through she's going through i'm like wait is there gonna gonna be some big is this like the long kong yeah that's what i'm saying i I almost expected that i was like oh that'd be really funny if she looked at steve mcqueen at the end and she was like you should remember you should have remembered me by the way and i'm glad that you love me now and by the way maybe we can have a family one day or something and it credits and and it turns into like misery (laughs) <laughs> that'd be funny well, she to, gets the sledgehammer <laughs> to oh go God. back with john and steve mcqueen you know the when his acting anyways i thought the his best scene was there at um at natalie wood's apartment at the dinner scene i think that kind was of. probably the best that he actually acted in that movie he had some weird parts in that mo- that scene though. yeah well but there was a lot of it was like he was happy. He was like, "Hey, this is this is great." You know, this was this horny. soup is this soup is great, or this uh, the steaks are awesome. And then she was like, "Oh, thanks. I'm actually practicing for you know because uh, my brothers want me to marry a, a cook or something like that." And he's like, "Son of a bitch!" But see, who signed for me? Who who shined for me in that scene was her. She's poking and prodding him and, mm-hmm. and doing yeah. the same thing he did to the in the music musician union hall. Yeah. The whole like you know have somebody page me so I look important thing. She's pulling the exact same trick. Like what I liked was that you did see a dynamic shift. She's chasing yes. him in the first part of the movie. Right. She moves out of her mom and dad's house. She becomes an adult and then basically realizes the power of of being a woman and turns that back around on him. And then he starts chasing her. Yeah, I thought. I mean, 
there was some some very obvious stuff with the bell, banjos and bells. It was mentioned so many times. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. he's a musician. This shouldn't be fucking difficult. Like, <laughs> like I expected a full band, but okay, you know, I I don't know. Well, well, I've got a I've got a couple of things. Sure, I got a couple of things more to to nitpick. Um, and and I do want to say going back to misery, we brought yeah. that up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, last episode. We were trying to decide about Stephen King books and the one that he threw away. Oh yeah, it was misery. It was misery. It was misery. It was misery. Okay. That's the one that he threw away, and his wife, his wife took out of the trash. Hmm. Um, but I, I've got. I, I'm going to say this. It's going to sound throughout this entire episode that I'm dogging the film, and I am. <laughs> yeah, I am dogging the film. But the, I really, really like the story. The story's good. The story should. The story needed to be told. I, 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 I think it, it definitely has its place in in cinema. Right. Well, I, I found it interesting, and we'll talk about this in a second. Talking about the story, but I found there was an interesting twist to the story too. Um, but I had an issue. You know, you, we're talking about time, and I did, I did, I, I did have that issue with her with her pregnancy. But I also had an issue. I didn't know that Dominic was her brother. I didn't either at first. I thought, yeah, yeah. yeah I, the majority of the movie, I thought that that Dominic was her dad. So did I. And her mom looks really old. Her mom looks like she's in her sixties. Yeah. Right. I I went back and I looked at, and, and Tom Bosley. And I granted, I mean, I've 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 only seen Tom Bosley a few in other Happy times. Days. And well, in Happy Days and Murder She Wrote, and uh, and this uh, is actually his uh, film debut. Right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This was film debut and uh, Father Dowling Mysteries as well. And that, that, if you haven't seen Father Dowling Mysteries, you you should. It's a it's an awesome movie. It's a it's a priest who, he's a priest who uh, who fights crime. Um, but I I looked up the actors' ages. Oh, okay. How old do you think the uh, uh, Penny Stanton, the uh, her mom? How old do you think her mom is in the in real life? That that actress at, that, at the time of that to- movie. Yes. Okay. I was gonna probably say forty nine, fifty. I said forty. I, I was gonna say forty five. Well, see, to me, she looks like she's sixty. No, no, no she, she looks she's young wearing to makeup. Me. She's wearing makeup and stuff. No, well, but, well yeah. to me, she looks sixty. So she's actually forty seven okay. in the movie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, right. Dominic uh, Herschel uh, Bernardi is forty <laughs> in the movie. Yeah. In the, no, no, not in the movie. In the, real life. In, in real, real life, life. the I'm actor's sorry. forty, yeah. so he looks significantly older than the twenty five year old Natalie Wood. Yeah, right. Well, and Tom Bosley looks significantly older than Natalie Wood, but he's only thirty six. Oh, see, that's interesting because I thought like when when they were trying to pair him up with her, I was like, wow, that, this dude's like way too old for her. Yeah, see, I thought I thought he was supposed to look older because what I thought was happening. Okay, so two things. I mean, he is. He's eleven years older. Yeah, but I mean, in, like in, in real in life. Movie. But but I mean, I, I thought they were trying to pair. I thought the mother and father were trying to pair Natalie Wood up with a stable. Man. Job guy, me man. too. Yeah, one well, who yeah. who was ugly, too ugly to get a, a wife when right. right at the right time, quote unquote. But now this young girl, hey, you're stable, you can take care of my my yeah. daughter. You mean the mother and the brother? The yes, brother. but but I'm saying like oh, yeah. like my perspective when sure. I was first watching it, oh, okay. yeah. I thought that that was mother and father, you so, know, trying to set her up. So yes. in the first, when they got into the truck, I'm 100 percent with you. I thought it was the dad, and I was like, okay, it's the dad, and then. Um, he said something in the truck that I was like, wait, I think it's his bro. I think it's her brother. And then whenever they went to the table and she's doing dishes and mom's talking to, to Dominic, she goes, you know, if your father, if, if Papa or something like that, if your father, she says your father or pa yeah. or Papa or something like that. Um, you know, when, when he and I were together and that's when I was like, okay, so dad's dead. These are brothers. That's a sister. Oh, I must've missed that. Then. It was a very quick, yeah. She said when your father or when or, or your papa or yeah. something like that. It was something to that effect. Maybe yeah. I couldn't understand all the Italian drama. <laughs> all the Italian stereotypes, you mean? Yeah. 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 The priest is there and like, oh, thank you so much. What what is wait, what is going on? Yeah, like, wait. Huh? <laughs> yeah. And the over dramatized Italian mom. Mom. Yeah. Oh yeah. Finding out that she's pregnant yeah. without a husband. Oh my god. <laughs> well, and the priest is saying, uh, you know, just, uh, kids move. They, kids do this. They move out of their house all the that time. That was funny. Yes, that I, I laughed. At. It's because the I priest didn't laughed, know. That I actually she was laughed pregnant. three times. Three. I had laughed out loud three times in this movie. Enough to the where I went. I laughed out loud again. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. didn't expect it. Go ahead, John. Sorry. I I think the, 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 you know a, a couple more things, and I, I don't know if I'm going to steal your thunder here, Kyle. But uh, the "I break your face" comment. Yes, we. 
we actually know someone in real life who says that all the time. Really? And yeah, she is Italian. And she is Italian. That's funny. So, yeah. it's, 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 so that's pretty funny. I, I laughed then because yes. of be, be, because of that. But um, the this film being classified as a comedy is lost on me. It, it's it's not funny to me. I mean, yeah. It's no Johnny Dangerous. Like. No, it is not Johnny. Oh, it's a God. classic, classic film. Um, I mean, I mean, I I laughed a couple of times during yeah. that. Yeah, you know, kid, kids always leave their their parents or whatever. Yeah. But in the the clumsiness between Anthony, which was uh, Tom Bosley, um, how Tom Tom Bosley was clumsy at her house mm-hmm. yeah. and knocking things over and all that and then whenever she whenever natalie wood is at his house she's, she's the one clumsy. that's clumsy yeah you know and all that so i i, I was like okay that, that that's kind of funny haha but um that's about it and and even i i can buy that the film is a romance yeah kind of because mm-hmm. he they end up wanting to be together but i don't they to me they don't sell it and and it goes back to it goes back to, to steve mcqueen's yeah, it's almost yeah. like a Acting. like food ingredients in a way. I would say this is the majority a drama. Yes. Um, and then hints of comedy, and then barely any romance. Well, you did this. You did this last time too. You picked something that was supposed to be, I think it was supposed to be a drama, but it was. But they were trying to be funny all like through the whole movie, and I was like, I don't know why they're trying to be funny. Like it's not. I forget what it was. was. It, I think it was either a romance or uh, something. Like yeah, that. John said that he thought it was funny though. Whatever it was, John, I it remember it may have been Brooklyn. It wasn't Brooklyn. Huh? It definitely wasn't Brooklyn. Oh, okay. John was like, because I thought the the table scenes, all the funny scenes that were supposed to be funny in Brooklyn, most yeah, of yeah. them I found funny too. Whatever it was, John said, uh, "Well, I found it funny. I laughed out loud." And I'm like, "I okay." It Maybe felt it was like a they comedy. were. It was supposed to be a drama. That was the whole point. It was another drama that you picked. You pick dramas that have these hints no. of humor in them. That um, I, I don't think I've ever picked a drama. Well then, I don't know what the hell it was. <laughs> John anyway. picked it though. John John was uh, talk. I think John's right in saying that the hints of comedy in this. I'm glad you picked it for drama because if yeah. you picked it for comedy, I would say it's a drama. All right. The the scene with the in the upholstery shop, the the 20 minutes that they spend in there, not 20 minutes. I think it's like 14 minutes. Or whatever. Like 20 it minutes. feels like 20 minutes. It feels like 20. It's an extended scene. Yeah. Um, that right there was way too serious. But I'm really glad they included it. Because again, if they didn't include that scene, them getting together, where John's saying it's not really a romance, I I kind of see it as a romance. I think that I think they pull off the romance thing. Not they. Natalie Wood pulls mm-hmm. off the romance thing. Like I, I don't know if I'm just smitten. Maybe that's it. You know, I'm I'm suddenly into gilfs. I don't know. Okay, there's something about her. Well, she was 25. She that wasn't. She a, was 25 then. I, I'd be 25 willing to, then. I'd well, be willing to talk to her today. Who knows? You know. <laughs> then she drowned in a very. Uh, I guess an odd situation at forty three or forty five. Oh, did she like drown? That? Yeah, I didn't know she drowned. Uh, I think her husband killed her. Jesus, okay. and Robert that got Redford. Dark. That got fun. N- n- um, no, it wasn't Robert Redford. It was. Um, I feel like he gets else. away with a lot of things, but not that much. Justin, Jesus, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's who she was married to. <laughs> no, I know. No, it was it was the one she was married to. This guy. Then she divorced him. Then she married Robert Redford, and then uh, she divorced him, and then went back to the original guy. Ah. Uh, and then the original guy, they have, there's some suspicious things. Uh-huh. Like, like they knew that she didn't know how to swim, and then she went out swimming, and then she drowned. Coincidence? I don't know. But, yeah. but, but she, well, she, yeah. maybe she was practicing. What, what, how, what, how old was she? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Robert Wagner. Wagner. Robert Wagner. Yeah, Wagner. Yeah, Robert, Robert Wagner. Not Redford, yeah, yeah Wagner. Yeah, Robert Wait, Wagner. The, uh, I remember this this, uh, this the, story now. The Unexplained Mysteries guy? The un- What's that TV show called? No. No, no, no. You're thinking Robert Stack. Oh, okay. No, Robert Wagner. Unsolved He's in Mysteries. A, he was in a lot of um, <laughs> a lot of made-for-TV films. Oh, okay. Uh, let, me, let me look him up real quick. Yeah. So... So one thing that I, I didn't... Uh, I did like the upholstery scene a yeah. little bit. Um, I thought it was a little long. Yeah. Um, but I did laugh at a part since we we're talking about comedy and all. Um, it's not like laugh out loud belly laugh. Yeah. But they're talking about love and all that, and and Steve McQueen like leans back on like on a recliner or something. He's like, "Why do I look dead to you?" Or whatever. Yeah, and she puts a flower. <laughs> and she goes and grabs yeah. and puts a flower on him. <laughs> I did. I giggled at that yeah, too. I, I did kind She's of. She's like, that. but what I like is she recognized it. She goes, "I couldn't help it." Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I had to do this. I almost feel like that was Natalie saying it, not. Not the 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 uh, actor Angie, mm-hmm. not Angie saying it. What, okay. What's up, John? Go ahead. R- Robert Wagner. He played um, Goldmember in in uh, in uh, uh, Austin Powers. He played number two. 
Yes, right? yes, yeah, yes. That, that's Robert Wagner. Wow. So he killed a man. Interesting. Well, that that's the suspicion that he that he because I'm wanting to say Allegedly. was it a swimming pool or was it out a it was it out on it a was, boat? It was out in the ocean. Yeah, Pacific Ocean. Yeah, it was it was out, it was out in a boat and she supposedly fell overboard or went for a swim even though she didn't know how to swim and yeah but so she never came back but, you know who else know. was on the boat oh gosh i used to know this um steve mcqueen i was gonna oh, say that that would be weird yeah no christopher walken oh well that makes sense yep. well, christopher walken was also on this if boat. i'm gonna kill a man i'm definitely taking christopher walken <laughs> with me i feel like he knows how to bury the yeah. bodies he knows the right people to call they're I mean, chopping my fingers off ira yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> Suicide Kings is a great movie. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, one thing I didn't understand is the chase scene. I felt was a little out of place. Oh, it was very and, out of place. And it was yeah. just it was it was all designed just to like we were talking about earlier just before the show, them. just to get them secluded so yeah. that they could have this intimate scene in the upholstery shop. Because I don't think I realized at that point yet that 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 Dominic was her brother yet. Oh, okay. Oh. So I felt it was really odd. Well, you, did you guys know like um, after they. Uh, met up with the guy to pay him the cash with the car mm-hmm. um, or for the abortion that there was a they ran off and then there was like another person coming into frame did you guys notice that yes yeah. yes i did it was, yeah, it it was, was a, a truck it was dominic no, no it was it was a it was a little kid oh was it the black kid yeah the one yeah. at the park and he, he was basically hired by the brothers to spy and just like <laughs> to keep tabs on natalie wood that's why they were actually able to get to that playground or whatever right so quick so yeah quick. i understood yeah. that but um and they're trying I guess to I run didn't away understand why they were so overprotective in the first place well, well they were a, trying to run Italian away family just, yeah, yeah because it's this is a really bad situation that they're in so speaking of i'm sorry to go back to time but that's another thing that bugged me so that that doctor gave them 45 minutes to yeah. meet him they apparently walked to wherever the subway i think was. it was real time <laughs> <laughs> That's a great, yeah. yeah. The rest of the movie's not in real time, but this real is. time. Then they get to the park. They hang out at the park for a few minutes. Mom's making lunch. Minutes. Yeah, mom's making lunch. All these people, yep. are, all these things are happening. They have time to hide out in Ilio's uh, upholstery shop. Yep. That's another 20 minutes at least. I mean, you, it's real time. All these things, and they go, <laughs> just made it. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Sure, you did. Yeah. <laughs> they ran the, around for 10 minutes. First half is over the span of two months. Second oh, half God. is over the course of 45 minutes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and. <laughs> The, I think time, the time's up. Will you at least admit the time's oh, a problem? Yeah, okay. it, it, is, it is a little bit of an Jesus. issue. Because I, I honestly didn't I, like see, it didn't really stick out to me that, oh, well, she, yeah, she's pregnant, so she should be showing at least something. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, at the very end, she's, you know, doing that dinner in a very, very tight dress. And I'm like, very tight, there's no waste. nothing there. Yeah. yeah. So, Kyle, you were mentioning about the, um, the doctor, uh, parking his car you know they, yeah they they did this whole secret thing and when this was all happening i was like wait a minute when when was rover roe v wade and all that stuff i, I didn't know 70s oh uh, it's like way later and it, like 73 yeah yeah that's so what I, was gonna say. I actually kind of so 10 years i kind of paused the movie for a minute to kind of do a little research about roe v wade kind of stuff um so abortion was legal in the state of new york up until 1970 oh interesting so then why didn't they just go to a, a regular clinic, aren't they? In, well, this uh, was 1963. Right. So you're just, saying it was legal up until... It was 19- illegal. Oh, illegal. 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 Oh, I thought you said legal. We all thought legal. No, illegal. Oh, okay. Um, wrong. <laughs> Policeable. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, but Roe v. Wade was 1973. Okay. However, it wasn't not quite illegal because up until 1970, a woman could get a waiver uh, if she showed signs of mental health issues... As a result of the pregnancy, especially in cases of suicide attempts. Okay, interesting. So that I was kind of curious of why they were having to do this all underground and everything, because again, I didn't know. Oh, you Ruby just didn't Wade know. Was 1973. I thought it was oh. a little earlier. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I thought it was around the same time. Yeah, I this understand. was still a, a huge no-no. Right. To do. Yeah, you've seen Dirty Dancing, right? Mm-hmm. Dirty Dancing happening happens in the 60s, early 60s, but the whole reason why the dad has to help. Um, Patrick Swayze's friend with her abortion on the back end of like a, you know, basically a, she, she goes, what happens is that she goes to get an abortion with some doctor who basically uses a coat hanger to to get her from being abortion from, uh, from being pregnant, I should say. And she gets sick. She ends up being like getting septic or something. And the dad who's a doctor jumps in to help. Mm. The whole reason he has to do that is because she had to go to a back alley abortion doctor. Right. That's what took place there. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think in, in this movie, that's probably my favorite scene. 
the abortion is, scene? is the abortion scene. Okay, that's dark. The weird statement, sure. Not because of the the things that were going on. But Did right. you just say the same thing? <laughs> you said the same thing. No, no, I said like in terms bit. of, I'm saying in terms of Steve McQueen's acting specifically. <laughs> okay. I'm hoping Justin's going to quantify this. I am. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead. Well, and, and to make it clear in case you haven't seen the movie, no abortion happens. Right, no, right, no. right. Yeah. No, what I, what I was what I was going to say is from the time where they meet up with the doctor and he, you know, he portrays like he's fixing his car. You know, yes. From that point on. And then we go through this whole roundabout thing with the whole parents and the running and the jumping and the the (laughs) upholstery scene. Everything short of climbing trees. Yeah, everything short of climbing trees. (laughs) Um, Then we get into, it it builds tension, Mm -hmm. right? And then when we get into this this apartment building and where they're going to perform this procedure, the tension that they're able to build in that scene is like at its peak. Do you know what they did? Yeah, they don't show anything. No, they sucked out all the music. Oh, was there no- and there's hardly any sound. Well, yeah, like the basically uh, Natalie Wood goes into another room with a woman who's going to do the procedure, and then there's the guy who plays, you know, the quote unquote the doctor, um, and him and Steve McQueen are in the the room outside the hallway, basically the hallway, yeah, yeah, the hallway. Yeah. Um, and and they don't talk to each other. They just no. like, like exchange glances. Yeah, every well, now and then. And he started whistling, which really ticked off. McQueen. Steve McQueen. Yeah, because <laughs> well, like, yeah, because he was like, making Starbuck. this. Yeah, because it, it gives the impression that this is like just a day to day easy thing. thing. Yeah. yeah, like there's no consequence. There's no no yeah. big deal about this. What and I, I think that's what pissed yeah McQueen off. That was part of what pissed him off. The other part was that the doctor, quote unquote, presented himself as the doctor herself. Well, oh. he says that he's the doctor and all, but then she goes back. With 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 that lady, and he that and he, doesn't he know. says he's like she's gonna start this, and he and they go back together. Her yeah. and, and uh, Natalie I didn't Wood, get that at all. yeah, her and Natalie Wood go back together, and he's that's why Steve McQueen keeps looking at him, not just the whistling, but also he's waiting for him to actually go into the room, and whenever he doesn't. And then she, I think uh, Natalie Wood makes a sound, or, or maybe maybe the tension just builds. I think the tension just builds, to, to and he point, finally just busts he through busts the door. He busts through, and he looks at her, and he looks at the ground, and he looks at her, and he's like, he's like, so are you the doctor or what? I mean, what, what's going on? Are you, you said there was a doctor, and she was like, she's like, well, this is, I'm, I'm good at. Do you this want stuff. it or not? Do you want whatever. this? Do you want this procedure or not? Yeah. They were made to believe there was a doctor. There was no doctor. That's what pisses well, them off in the first well, place. Okay. Well, yeah. That there, the technic- that, there, that there was a doctor, but he he didn't say that he was a doctor. No, he never said that he was a doctor. No, because no, he, he, he it was the procedure was four hundred dollars and fifty dollars for him being the the runner, the go between to set up the appointment. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Well, there's there's a. There's an unspoken. There's a doctor, but there's not a doctor thing right. happening. Right. Yes. Yes. and that that illusion. The term him off. "doctor" was was used very loosely in that scene, just because that's the person who was doing the procedure. Yeah, but yeah. so I they mean, they they equated you know doctor with doing the procedure. Yeah, they 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 were expecting a, a, an, an actual an doctor. actual doctor, an actual to doctor. Come in yeah, yeah, but that's and, what and that's it, yeah. that's where McQueen loses the the thing I liked about it was McQueen. I agree with you. That's one of the only scenes that McQueen actually did a really good job at. Other than that, eh. Yeah. But what's yeah. weird is in that scene, to me, the two characters reverse roles a little bit. Like I said, for me, Natalie Wood, when she's staring at the window and she's acting shocked and stuff, she's fine. But she's almost doing nothing. She's just standing there. Yeah. Once she turns around and starts making those noises, eh, I wasn't a fan. Okay. Yeah. So the ending. Let's let's jump to the ending here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what did you guys think about the way that this ended? I loved it. I hated it. I hated it. I thought I, it was okay. I, I loved love it. it but. I loved it because it was real. There was there was actually they didn't close down the street. I was gonna say it I noticed did, that it did yeah. feel very casual. It did feel candid. That's it, what it was oh, for. It, it was candid. They, he's right. They did it on the street without. They didn't close it down. Those are real people. Right. That's why they're all yeah, staring they're all at Steve at the McQueen and, and shit. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. why I love that ending is because it was real. They had two cameras running at the exact same time, which is almost unheard of in movies. They had like that more then. than two. Well, no, because there was there was one on the ground and, and then there, there was one, there up, was the one shot, up top and then there was one in the street. No, the one in the street was moving. Like that whole oh, that it one moved from one spot to the next. Yeah, when okay. when she was coming out of the store. Yeah, and um, this there was like a one continuous shot of them like walking out. Mm-hmm. Uh, after obviously there was some cuts in between her and McQueen. Yes, uh, with his banjo, but <laughs> once they once they started to walk together out into the middle of the street, there's one camera that's tracking 
like all the way like handheld yeah and when they cut to the one that's looking above you can actually see the camera crew in the crowd yeah yeah, yeah. And, and they it, do this quick zoom out yeah with the camera I, I actually really like that just because it was it was a real scene but yeah, i think you're talking interesting st- i think I'm, you're talking story right? yeah something yeah. story wise yeah, yeah. It, was, yeah. It, it, it was wrapped up too it, quickly exactly that's yeah. what i was about to say it i when when we see him outside with the sign and all that i was in here going okay i know this movie's only an hour it's an hour 42 I feel like there's so much more to wrap up in this movie. There's so mm-hmm. much more resolution that has to happen. Yeah, and then yeah. a um, minute later, it's unless like the it was end. unless it was a like a and they lived happily ever after, like, or or if it ended up on the edit floor. I, I'll, I'm I'm kind of with you guys a little bit, but I am kind of with Kyle too. Like I agreed it. I agreed that it ended too quickly, but the reason why I think it's okay is because I would hate to sit through the next 35 or 40 minutes of them trying to wrap right. that up. Yeah. I would be bitching if we did if it was a 2 hour and 15 minute movie. <laughs> I would have cut every single thing. I would have cut down the scene with Rocky's parents and I, put more a little bit towards the end. With whose parents? Rocky. Rocky. Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I'm sorry. I lost the name. I, I, I'm telling you guys now, I don't remember names in movies like that perfectly all the time. Sorry. It's but, Rocky Papasano. Yeah, no. In uh, Skin I Live In, it's Antonio Banderas. I don't remember the guy's name at all. So, yeah, I agree with you. I think that could have been oh. cut down some. But I think it also gave us, it again made me question why. It actually gave us an, a glimpse of him as a person, which was good. You're right. But it gave us a glimpse of him as a person that made made him as a person, as an adult, almost make zero sense with this whole he hates marriage and he sees it as a weight and all that stuff. I'm like, from where? Where are you getting that? Right. Every relationship he seems to be around seems to be a happy marriage. <laughs> I don't well, understand. Okay, we're, we're forgetting like one kind of important actress in this in this movie. The the blonde. That's, Barbie. Uh, yeah. Barbie, the, the dancer. Yeah, the dancer. Yeah. I, I every time well, I've only seen this two times, but every time I've seen it, I'm thinking, man, Barbie's a cool chick mm-hmm. because she is like <laughs> she's very easygoing, very easygoing because she's like, oh, there's a a woman in my apartment. She is a burlesque dancer. Like that's true. Like what the hell's going on? Why can't I come home with a Natalie Wood <laughs> chick in my shower? I'll say this though too, um, and I I don't know if I like this in the beginning for even for Stephen McQueen. Him and Barbie apparently were yeah. um were in bed for like a brief second. Looked like they were about to start making out. She's like unbuttoning his shirt and kissing his stomach, which yeah, I'm yeah. just saying, you know what's up. And uh, she says something about love, and he's like, "Yeah, there is love here. Um, I'm in love with myself, and you're in love with yourself." And I was like, "That's a really telling." St- I-, I like that line. I was like, "That's mm-hmm. a really telling statement about as who these two characters are." As they're looking at themselves in, in the, the mirror, mirror. Yes. I was like, "This is a really telling statement of who yeah. these characters are." I was like, "That's a." With one line to be able to develop that much of, of, a, of a character. A backstory. And yeah, character, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's perfect. And it tells us a lot about their relationship. Yeah. It's not serious. That's why, you know, him showing up with a br- brunette, she's a little pissed, but she's not surprised. She's like, oh, okay. Well, well this pissed- is probably the only place that he could actually what, shelter her. What pissed her off about, about him asking for the doctor, or about him asking for something for Angie? It wasn't that he said, hey, I cheated on you and I banged this other girl who's now pregnant. It was that he's asking for a doctor. She's perfectly fine if you... Get her, yeah, get her pregnant. That's fine. Get a doctor. That's fine. But you come to me. How dare you? Right. Like that's so. Yeah. Well, know, knowing that's a crazy, knowing that it, you know she's probably been in those situations, or I mean, maybe, or or assuming that she's been in those situations just because she's a burlesque dancer. Yeah. It, it like it like downplayed her her lifestyle, and she's like, wait, I'm not just gonna go around sleeping with everybody. Like, she you're, felt you're expecting yeah. me to find you a doctor? Yeah, that's yeah. what I got from that too. Yeah. 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 Um, well, do you have uh, numbers? I, I do have something. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the budget. Um, I have For this movie. Yeah, uh, I have the budget, but I don't have um, the actual box, uh, office. box office numbers. So we can just do for for budget. That's fine, John. Let's hear your budget numbers. I feel like you got this. <laughs> I I'm gonna say million bucks. Oh, that, that's was, a that, that good was actually guess. mine. Million bucks. All that's right. a good guess. I'm going to do 900,000. Wow. I'm, I'm going to go okay. 3 million. All right. Well, it's it's Eddie. It's actually $8.5 million mm. estimated. You know what's funny? And I am I'm I often say you guys don't turn me or anything like that. I was going to guess $8 million until he said one, and then I was like, well, shit. It, and he's kind of <laughs> right. It was kind of – there wasn't a whole lot. I'm going to go three. That's that's easy. There yeah. you go. I could have said go, eight. Just go high. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so $8.5 million for the estimated budget for this movie. I mean, Steve McQueen wow. banked. 
Steve McQueen and Natalie Wood probably made a shit ton of money on this. Yeah, yeah, because they really didn't shoot too much. They, help, they even the last shots candid. There's nothing to even do. They, well, just they didn't ever even walking out of Macy's. They didn't even pay for the street to be shut down. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they saved, they saved a dollar. That's for sure. Yeah, they saved filming permits. <laughs> so you don't have any any box office or anything. No, so we're going no over. To yeah, so money. let's yeah. do Rotten Scores. Tomatoes. What do you guys think that the uh, audience thought of audience? This movie? Oh, I'm gonna go. 85%. Damn it. That's exactly what I was going to say. John, go ahead. Mm. 85? Yeah. You can't say 85. Kyle just said it. I, I, I know. I'm, I'm repeating <laughs> just, what he I'm, said. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go mm, 80, 89. 89? Oh, okay. I'm going to go 84. Oh. <laughs> well, it's actually 87. Damn it. Oh, oh damn. So you guys so split we, it. Yeah, we split it. <laughs> Holy crap. Nice. Um, And what do you guys think that the critics gave it? Mm, I'm gonna go a little bit lower. I'm gonna go 75. Uh, John, 80. That's a good guess. Uh, I'm gonna say 85. 80 on the dot. Oh wow! Oh wow! Nice. Wow. Holy crap! Yeah, so 80 it. for uh, critics and 87 for the audience. Hmm. Nice. Okay. Okay. So Kyle, if you want to kick us off to start our ratings for sure. Love with the proper stranger. Yeah. Um, the first time I saw this movie, it was actually on TCM. Um, my wife and I just turned it on and you know, that the, the, you know how they do like the, the description of the movie mm-hmm. at the very, at the very beginning, uh, before they start playing it. Yeah. That got me really intrigued. And you know, they were talking about the abortion scenes and it's like, this is something that has never been done in filmmaking. Um, there's been, uh, the, the talks about abortions and stuff like that, but not necessarily getting to the dirty and nitty gritty aspect of what is actually going on, like how dangerous it is and all that kind of crap. Um, but this, it started off a a trend, not necessarily a trend, but like for, uh, it, it opened up a door for other movies to, it broke the ice. Talk about taboo. Yeah. It broke the ice in, in a sense. Um, and so I, when I watched it the first time, I'm thinking, damn, this is actually a really good movie. And, you know, watching it the second time, I had the same feelings. Um, I think I'm going to score this, uh, an eight and a half. Okay. 8.5. I, I wish I could, I, I could score this a high, higher than, 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 than what I'm, what I'm going to score it. Um, I, I did not like the, um, the, the technical aspects of it. I didn't like the long pauses. I didn't like the, obviously I didn't like Stephen Queen's acting. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, but I mean, I did it, like I said, I did enjoy, I I did enjoy the, the story. Um, because I think it's a story that, that especially in, in, uh, the sixties needed to be told. Um, I think I am going to give this one a solid six. Okay. You definitely wouldn't like the movie Drive then with Ryan Gosling. Talk about stupid pauses and (laughs) like, oh my God. Like there's probably five minutes of nobody speaking whatsoever. They're just looking at each other. It's like, just say something, (laughs) please. But but cool music. I know they had a really good music bed underneath. I I can dig that. Um, So yeah, uh, I appreciate like you were saying about the taboo subjects. I appreciate Mm. movies that try to tackle these kind of subjects, especially the ones that you know, try to do it first. Yeah. You know, um, but, uh, the pauses didn't really bother me. It, it was just the, the long scenes that I felt could have been shorter. I I felt like they got their point across in, in, you know, the first half of the scene and the other half was just kind of padding. Um, and I wish I would have been able to cut those down and put a little bit more kind of resolution towards the end a little bit. Um, because I did feel like it, it, ended really abruptly um and then i had some confusion again with the whole is it the brother or is it the father aspect of it um yeah that kind of stuff um i i feel like i'm the only one that did like steve mcqueen's acting no i liked it i liked his acting there was just i liked the subtlety like like you were saying earlier eddie i didn't think he was that subtle but i'm with you yeah oh i thought thought it was you. natalie woods uh, natalie woods subtlety was amazing yeah yeah her her eyes alone told a whole story yeah that's true um especially during the scene where she's cooking dinner for him like you're saying like she she was poking and prodding him yeah like like he was in a sexy sexy way (laughs) in the that little silk thing that she puts on was that supposed to be an apron? It was supposed to be an apron. Yeah, it's just an apron. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If that's what, mm. <laughs> yeah. 
anything that has to do with food. Mm. Uh, I like that apron. Um, well, I'm going to give this uh, probably, I'm going to give it a seven, I think. Okay. Eddie. Okay. So um, you guys are bringing up the taboo thing, and I meant to mention this whenever John brought it up earlier, and I, I apologize. I forgot to, to touch back on it. So I'm going to do that now real quick. Uh, the thing I liked about this uh, movie was that you said it had an abortion scene in it. And mm-hmm. in my mind, I was like, oh, great. Hollywood's going to be pushing an abortion scene down our throats in the 60s. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> and they did. But what's funny is that this is actually an anti-abortion movie. It, it yeah. is. Yeah. And it's actually a traditionalist movie. It's actually mm-hmm. a movie that's built for, um, you know, for like looking at relationships and things from a slightly different perspective of how people might get together. But at the same time, they're both clamoring, especially um, like when Rocky, that's his mm-hmm. name, yeah. Steve McQueen. Right. When Rocky is against marriage and against, you know, being a good person in a, in a lot of ways and, and is embracing the idea of abortion, his life is shit. Like he's getting thrown out of houses. He can't get a job. Like nothing, nothing is actually good for him whenever he's doing the bad things, quote unquote. Right. Whenever he decides, you know what, actually, I'm going to be, a, I'm going to go ahead and be a father. I'm going to be with this girl. I'm going to be a father. I'm going to embrace, you know, marriage. I'm going to, and she, she said, she's like, all my friends, you know, from back in the day are, are divorced and stuff. I just, I want to, I want to have a real relationship. I don't just want to marry somebody to marry somebody or marry somebody for the wrong reasons. That's a traditional perspective of marriage. It's not a perspective of marriage of, of, uh, you know, just, just it's willy nilly. It's no big deal. You know, it doesn't mean anything. Right. That's a. I liked that it had those subtle elements to it. Those were things that weren't um, apparent, especially from your description of the movie. Mm. Um, the biggest killer for this to me was kind of the technical aspects. But when I say technical, I'm going to go ahead and say scientific. Fucking people get fat with pregnancy. It's not just a thing where you can't wear a size zero for 10 months or however long this. And when, it's not always winter in New York because it, it seems to take longer than a week. And yet it's yeah. somehow taking place in a week. Uh, I'll say I would say mm-hmm. like two two or three months max. Then that's fine. Two yeah. or three months of pregnancy though, you're going to be showing something, yeah. right? Right. So on top of the two or three months that they banged before even the the music right. hall union union hall thing. So yeah. Um. So on all of that to say, uh, honestly, I think Natalie Wood is probably my one of my favorite uh, pre nineteen seventy actresses at this point, just based on her on this one movie. I just think the look she gave, the way she was able to tell the story with her face, and I love the modernity, the, the modernness of how these actors um, portrayed themselves. Mm. It wasn't kiss of death. Right. It wasn't, yes, yes, this will happen. It reminded me of Citizen Kane in a lot of ways. It reminded me of like a, a modern... Natural. Natural way of acting, not a stuck up my ass. I'm, I'm a stage actor. I'm going to do... Everything is Shakespeare, and gotcha. I appreciated that. So for me, um, I'm going to say that this movie is a 6.8. Okay, so a 6.8 for yeah. Eddie. So that means Love with a Proper Stranger gets the proper a... Stranger. The God, I keep saying A. That's okay. <laughs> uh, I, I get it. 7.1. All right, cool. Nice. So John, Eddie and I have to spin to find out who... It's going to be us. Justin and Animation. I hope not. But okay. Go ahead, John. Okay. So which one of us first? And here we go. <laughs> so sad when it's down to two. And, uh, da, 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 da. and it's gonna be Justin. Ah <laughs> Animation. Here we come. Right. And now Ooh. we're gonna spin for genre. Genre. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be comedy. Oh, oh my okay. god! <laughs> please, oh. please, not another. Why do you always get comedy, man? <laughs> please, Jesus. no. Because I'm. Isn't he hilarious. the funny one though? I mean, isn't what? he supposed to be the funny guy of the group? Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> I'm you sorry. Know. I forgot our roles. Funny looking. You know, funny looking. Yeah. Um. So Johnny Dangerously has a sequel. Oh no! Um, please, oh, no. Please, no! Please, God, kidding. No. Johnny more dangerously. <laughs> I only watched I like Johnny it. Dangerously once. <laughs> once. Just once. Once. <laughs> once. I'm going to pick a movie that isn't, uh, I haven't seen in a while, um, but uh, I remember finding it pretty funny. Um, it's not necessarily a comedy. I think it's kind of billed as like a uh, as a crime movie first, but it has But is it comedy. labeled as comedy? Yeah, it, yeah it's okay. labeled as comedy, um, right. and it, it does have some funny moments to it from what I remember. Okay. Um, Dragnet. No, it's a, <laughs> it's a movie from 2005 called Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. 
Oh, oh, I know Kiss Kiss yeah, okay. yeah, Have you seen yeah. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so it stars Robert Downey Jr., uh, Val Kilmer in his skinny time. No, or his fat time, I mean. Yep. And um, uh, so it stars Robert Downey Jr., uh, Val Kilmer in his, his fat period, and uh, Michelle Monaghan. Um, so it's about a it's a murder mystery that brings together a private eye, a struggling actress, and a thief masquerading as an actor. Then Which they try is, to solve yeah. a, a mystery, a, a killing. Yeah. Gotcha. Robert Downey Jr. is still doing uh, Coke, so, yeah. Yeah, at this time, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so if you want to follow along with the crew here at Screen Riot, go into justwatch.com, go search for Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, and you'll be able to find all the places that you can stream it. Um, and also, make sure you leave us a like and subscribe and do all those things that I ask you to do every week that nobody <laughs> does. <laughs> <laughs> Leave us a comment. You know, we we'd really appreciate yeah. you know how you guys actually feel about our podcast and and we can't improve if you yeah. don't let us know what we can yeah. improve on. Comments, please. Yes, yeah. give me comments, please. Yeah, yeah. So go to our Facebook, go to our Twitter, just post them about it, whatever. Um, I promise we'll talk back to you. <laughs> we won't leave you hanging. So um, also make sure you go to our website. That's AmericanPodcasting dot net and click on Screen Riot and check out our other shows and stuff like that. And with that, uh, I think we're out of here. All right. See you guys. See you.